Good morning, church. Thank you, Sister Ella, for that welcome. And thank you so much for having me here today. I am delighted and honored to be with you all. Happy Women's History Month to all the women in the house. Can I get a hallelujah from all the women? Amen. The month of March is when we take time to celebrate women for their countless contributions all around the world. For centuries, women have been underlooked and underappreciated. And it's such a privilege to be alive today to witness the way women are being celebrated. So this month, we have that opportunity to celebrate women. And to all women, I celebrate you. May God continue to be with you in Jesus' name. In line with our theme of the resilient woman, my topic today is also Ruth, a story of resilience. And I know Sister Kemi had done justice. She just did justice to that. So maybe I don't even have anything to say. But I'm still going to say it because I'm representing the career women and also the women in the marketplace today. So we all know Ruth. Ruth was that woman that married one of the sons of Elimelech. Elimelech was married to Naomi, and they are both, they were both from the Bethlehem of Judah. So there was a great famine in the land, so they decided to go down to the country of Moab. While at Moab, Ruth had married Elimelech's son. And Elimelech had two sons. So Ruth was married to one of the sons, and then Oprah was the second woman that married the other son. Unfortunately, Elimelech died after 10 years, and also his sons. So Naomi was left with two daughters-in-law. Then one day, Naomi heard the news about God had answered the prayers of the people of the Bethlehem of Judah. And she was like, oh my goodness, I have nothing here anymore. I need to go back to my own country. Just like we are immigrants. If one day you get a phone call from wherever you are from, if you are from Nigeria or Kenya or whatever country you're from, and they tell you that, guess what? The government is not working. You can actually go to the bank and withdraw money. <laughs> you have good roads. You can flip up the switch and you have the light. What are you going to do? You're going to consider going back, right? So Naomi decided to go back to her own country. Then Ruth decided to follow her. We all know that story, so I'm not going to repeat that. Ruth decided to follow her. And when they got there, Ruth then became an immigrant herself. Remember, she was from the country of Moab. But what I liked about Ruth is what I'll be sharing just in a moment. But before I do that, I would like to define what a resilient woman is or a resilient person. A resilient person is someone that is patient, someone who refrains from throwing in the towel as the first sign of resistance, someone who is willing to go the mile. And we can see the resilient traits in James, our anchor text for today, James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Can we have that displayed, please? James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let the perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. What does pure joy mean? Pure joy means do not despair. It means keep the faith. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. Perseverance leads to maturity and completeness. The question is not, will you be tested? If you read that verse very well, it says that when you are tested, you should consider it pure joy. I recall a time that I wanted to move ahead in my career, 
And as Sister Ella said, I'm an environmental scientist, and I just wanted to move on. I felt like I had stayed in that place for too long. But one of the goals that I had when I started having my children was that I was going to be the mom that will be there when the school bus comes. The school bus gets to my house around 3.30, and I wanted to pick up my kids. So that meant that my options were limited. I couldn't work in a place whereby I had to close at 6 p.m. My options were really limited, and I wanted to move forward. I wanted to elevate. So I had the option of just two organizations based on my research, and I started attending interviews. I would apply for a position. You know how you get a call and they'll say, oh my goodness, you did so well. But it was really tough. It was really tough to make a choice. Sorry you didn't make it. And my heart will break. And I did that for multiple times. Until one day, everybody say one day. One day, one day I got that call. And it was the human resources on the other line. And he said, congratulations. You got the job. I was like, yes, finally. So I got the job, right? They said I got the job. And I had to go back to work. They called my references, which was one of my bosses and all that. And a few days later, I got another call from that same human resources. And he said, oh, sorry. We have to resign that offer. I'm like, wait, what? It felt like the whole world was crushing under my feet. Something I thought that I already got. And I just watched it go away. I was helpless. And I didn't know what to do. I was confused. I was exhausted. I was dejected. I felt like God had forsaken me. I didn't understand why that would happen to me. And to make matters worse, thankfully, I went back to my old office. I explained what had happened. And the top boss just said, oh, well, we didn't want you to leave anyway. Go back to your cubicle. <laughs> but it was embarrassing because we had about over 250 people working in that office. And the news are already spread around that she was leaving. And then they see you again like, what are you doing here? So I met one of my coworkers one day. He stopped me in the hallway. And he looked at me. He said, you're still smiling? I said, yes. I'm still smiling because God is good. And he said to me, he said, you're like a little baby that is trying to walk. But you know the baby keeps falling down. But the baby never stays down. And that's the message of resilience. It's not like you're not going to fall down. There will be circumstances in life that you will fall down. But the beauty of it all is that you find that courage and strength and faith in God to keep standing up. May you never be down in Jesus' name. So let's take a look at some of the traits that define Ruth's resilience. Ruth had unshakable faith. As we are celebrating Women's History Month, do you have faith? Ruth believed in Naomi's God. If you read Ruth chapter 2, verses 2, she said, don't urge me to leave you. Where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God, and your people shall be my people. Can you say that about God? Like, God, no matter what, I will stay with you. I will believe you. I will trust in you. I will do whatever it takes, no matter how many times I fall down. Ruth had unshakable faith. Another trait that defined Ruth's resilience is the fact that she was loyal. She was loyal to her mother-in-law. It didn't matter to her that she lost her husband. Remember, Ruth was a widow, and her mother-in-law was a widow as well. She had the option of staying back in her country of Moab, but she was loyal to her mother-in-law, and she wanted to take care of her mother-in-law. She wasn't looking for anything. She wasn't looking to be rewarded. In fact, Naomi said, even if I start now to go and marry another husband, will you wait till that child that I give birth to grow up before you marry the person. So Ruth was not looking for the rewards. She, she was just loyal. She wanted to be with her mother-in-law 
and to serve her. The other thing I loved about Ruth, and Sister Kemi touched on this, Ruth had initiative. As a woman, or even as a man, you might find yourself in a new environment. Just like I asked or talked about the fact that a lot of us are immigrants. You might be the CEO of where you're coming from, and then you find yourself in a new place, whereby sometimes you might need to take a position that is beneath what you think you're qualified for. How do you react to that? Ruth had initiative. She said, let me go to the field. She didn't wait for that opportunity to come. She told her mother-in-law, let me go to the field. That's Ruth, 2 verse 2. It says, let me go to the field and pick the leftover grain behind anyone. Sometimes you might need to do things that are below your capacity. Remember, nothing moves until you move. When you do things that are below your capacity, just like Joseph in prison, he was interpreting dreams. But God already told him where he was going. But the prison didn't look like it. But Joseph showed up at his place of assignment. Are you showing up at your place of assignment? Don't always wait for opportunities to come. Go out and create them. Another trait about Ruth was that she was hardworking. Our co-workers testified about her. When Boaz came, he noticed her and said, who is that woman? They said she's been working all day except the time that she took a little rest. Can your co-workers testify about you? I had once gone for a, another interview. I keep going for interviews. Don't mind me. <laughs> so I went for this interview, and I accepted the offer. But this time around, the tables turned. I had to reject the offer because I got another offer. So I was a little worried about breaking the news because, you know, ah, I felt really bad. So when the woman called me, she was already excited. She already sent out emails. She went, is joining us. We're excited about this. When I broke the news to her, I thought she wouldn't take it very well. But she said, your reputation precedes you. I've never heard of that. I'm like, what? You don't even know me. Why will you tell me that my reputation precedes me? Some people have been advocating on my behalf. And when you look at yourself, can people say your reputation precedes you in a positive way? Because that can go negative as well. The last thing I would like to mention about Ruth's, the traits that defined her resilience is that she submitted to mentorship. A lot of people have blazed that trail that you're trying to blaze. You're not the first person because there's nothing new on that heaven. So whatever it is you're trying to do, you need to submit to mentorship. Ruth listened to Naomi. She wasn't arguing with her. She listened to every word of advice. And today, she's in the lineage of Jesus. Are you submitting to mentorship? Rewards for resilience. So let's talk a little bit about the rewards. Why should you be resilient and why should you consider it? Maturity is the first one. And that is found in our anchor text of James 1 verses 2 to 4. It says that, can we have it displayed on the screen please? James, James 1 verses 2 to 4. Consider a pure joy whenever you face trials. That's resilience, right? And it says that let your... Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature. That's it. When you're matured, that's a reward because you're no longer a baby. You can handle things, the trials and tribulations of life. Then it also says you're complete. If you look, read that verse 4, it says be mature and complete. So maturity, completeness. And the third one is promotion. When God sees that you can successfully handle tough situations, it gives you more responsibilities. It promotes you. And number four is abundance, which is also in that verse, verse 4, James 1, verse 4. Please leave it on the screen. Abundance, it says that you are not lacking anything. When you live in a world where you have access to everything you need, that's a reward for resilience. 
And last but not the least is a spot in history. We're celebrating a lot of women in this Women's History Month. We can talk about some of them. Marie Curie, Sister Praise talked about that. Aria Tubman was one that was saving the slaves. We can also talk about Maya Angelou, Rosa Parks. A lot of women, we can talk about Pastor Fumi, she's still alive, but we're celebrating her. So a lot of women and even men are celebrated for their resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from a tough situation. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your story is. But I would like to encourage you this morning not to lose hope. Keep believing in God. As we continue to celebrate Women's History Month and honor the resilience of women that have made their mark, take time to look inward. Ask yourself some questions. Is my faith in God unshakable? Am I giving my best everywhere I find myself? Also ask yourself, what legacy am I building? What will be said of me when I'm long gone? The answers you provide are personal, but they might help you to live a life beyond ordinary. And I would like to leave you with this. The past may not be your fault, but you can start today and have a new ending. Thank you, and God bless. Hallelujah. Thank you so much.